Hi. Now in this video what I want to do is talk to you about a particular measure of central tendency to a set of data. It's called the mean. Also I'll talk to you about deviations from the mean. And you'll have an example to do on this at the end. Now suppose I took tube of chocolate sweets. Not just one tube, but say six tubes, and counted the number of sweets there were in each tube. And these were the following results that I got. Now suppose I emptied all the contents out, one big pile of sweets, and then decided to fill each tube each of the six tubes with the same number of sweets. Then the number of sweets per tube would be called the mean. Mathematically it's represented like this. These are called observations and we usually use the letter X to denote observations. So I've got X is such that in the first tube we had 37 sweets and so on. So when it comes to working out the mean there's a standard symbol that we use. It's generally X with a little bar over the cross. X bar as we pronounce it. And so if we were to work this out we would empty all the contents and find the total of those sweets and that is often given by this symbol here. It's pronounced Sigma. We add up all the sweets, sigma x, the sum of all these values here. So we would get the total of all the sweets and then we need to share that total between all the six tubes that we've got. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay? And we're just going to call that n, the number of observations that we have. So this is the standard way of generally writing how you find out the mean. You will however see in some textbooks a more structured way, shall we say. It is often quoted as 1 over n times sigma and then each of these observations is written as x with a little subscript. Let's say i, where i goes from one to however many observations you've got. So in our particular example it would be six. So for n equals six we would see that sigma x the sum of all our values here. Now I could write this as i going from one to six but it seems silly when we're clearly talking about all the data. So there is a tendency to leave that off. We're going to need to add up our observations. So if we total those observations, what do we get? Well it turns out that it comes to a total of 228. So we have a total of 228 suites if we emptied them all out. To get the mean that would be the number of sweets per tube, if they were shared out evenly, would be to do this calculation here. 228 shared between all the six tubes. And that comes to 38. So we have a mean of 38. I'd like to just show you what we mean by deviations from the mean. And the best way I can do this is by taking, say, a piece of graph paper like this. And we'll mark in, say, our mean at 38. Let's just put it there. We have 39 and 40. And down here would be 37. And here would be 36. So we've got a mean value of 38. Let's just put a line across here for the 38. Now when we look at our first observation here, 37, we see that if we put a block here, that this block is one sweet 
less than the mean here of 38. So we could say that we are one below the mean. We have what's called a deviation of minus one unit. When we look at the second tube, we see that it had 40 there, two more than the mean. And if I was to carry on like this, we have all of these deviations here. When we have the 38, there was no deviation from the mean. So, can you see what happens? The total of the deviations above the mean came to 3, 2 and 1. And the total deviations below the mean came to minus 3. They neutralize themselves out. We've got just as much above as we have below. And that's another way then of looking at how the values deviate from the mean. Now here's a question that I'd like you to try based around these ideas. We've got here, in order to get a grade A in his maths, Stuart must achieve a mean score of at least 80 points. If over the first five modules he has a mean score of 78, what is the lowest score needed in his final module in order to get an A grade? Okay, you might like to pause the video, have a go at this, and I'll run through it in a moment. Okay, well, let's see how you got on. Well, first of all, what we know is that he's got a mean score of 78 over the first five modules. So that means that if we were to do one-fifth of the sum of all those first five modules, which we can denote by xi, i going from 1 to 5, this will be the sum then of each of those modules, it's got to come to 78. Okay? And so we can find out what the sum of those first five modules were. Let's just write sigma xi, i going from 1 to 5, is going to be 5 times the 78 if we multiply both sides by the 5. So 5 times 78, what does that give us? It comes to a total of 390. So he's got so far a total of 390 points. We don't know how they're spread in each module, what he got for each module, but we do know that he's got a total in all of 390. Now, he's got to get a mean score of at least 80 across every module, as we see here. So that means that over six modules, the mean, that's one-sixth of the sum of all of those six modules, i going from one to six, has got to turn out to be more than or equal to 80. And so therefore, if we were to multiply both sides by six, we would now get what he needs over the six modules, the total sum. It's going to have to be greater than or equal to 80 times 6, which means that he's got to score greater than or equal to 480. 480 points are needed at least. So that means that therefore the lowest score that Stuart can get Okay, we'll just put lowest score needed has to be 480 points minus the 390 that he's already got over the first five modules. And that comes out to 90. 90 points are least needed. So Stuart, I just hope you can do that. Okay, well that uh, brings us now to the end of this particular tutorial then on how you work out the mean from a set of observations. 
and also what we mean by the deviation from the mean. Okay, so I hope that was of some use for you.